All right, thank you guys so much for being here. People have been skiing on this mountain for 85 years. Which is a pretty amazing thing. So thank you guys for being here. You guys are all what makes Showdown so special and I think we all know that. We're gonna start tonight um, with a little history lesson. So I am so proud to introduce and bring up my grandfather, George Willett. There's a box in the back. Back. I'm gonna run for governor, and I'd like you to put some money in back. <laughs> That's how rumors get started, George. I'm calling a reporter tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, uh, Katie asked me to do this this morning, and I was only able to get two pages of notes. So, um, as most of you know, Showdown uh, started in 1936, and a bunch of old guys from Nyhart, Ed Shank, George Prentice, Joe Taylor, Jim Hasterlick, all got up here and they started skiing, and it progressed from there. Uh, they worked their butts off. They all walked and skied, which is what in the old days you used to do. You'd have to sidestep up, so you had packing to come down on. Um, the, the war happened in 41. All of those guys, most of them anyhow, went to the Second World War, and joined the 10th Mountain Division, and uh, went off to Europe and fought uh, with the, uh, and they all skied. So it was a great, great, um, opportunity for them. Some of them, like Ed Shank and George Prentice, came back from the war <coughs> and went up to the big mountain and started the big mountain in Whitefish. So, a lot of history. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and Ed Shank died several years ago, and a couple of years ago, his wife called and said, I flew over to your place the other day, and I said, what were you doing? She said, I dumped part of Ed out on King's Hill. I thought, <laughs> Perfect. So it was good. 1940, uh, the old part of the lodge was built. And they got a rope tow from Charlie Bovey or a motor, and they ran a rope tow right up along the trees there. And that was the first lift we had. Uh, it uh, when I when I changed the names of the runs, the only person that ever called was Mrs. Bovey. And I just apologize. I never even thought of that. Anyhow, maybe Katie can fix it. I don't know. <laughs> In 1946, after the war, uh, some of the Great Falls Ski Club came, and uh, again, they got things going again at Showdown. Jack Throckmorton, Harlan Corey, Joe Taylor again, Jim Hasterlick, and... Uh, the ski club was kind of involved in, and so was the ski patrol, the Great Falls Ski Patrol. And they had their, I think, 50th anniversary a couple of years ago at Showdown. So that was really special. 1957, or 46, I guess that's what I just talked about. 57. <laughs> 57. Uh, they formed a corporation called uh, Ski Lift Incorporated sold some stock, and put a Palmer right up the front of the Big Seven, right up the middle of the Big Seven, all the way to the top. And it was one of those lifts that taught you how to ski going uphill. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd start out, out of the box, stand there like this, and all of a sudden you're going 30 miles an hour. There's something between your legs. I mean, it's quite a show. <laughs> so, we had... <coughs> It's my first day speaking, so I'm sorry. To call it we had a lot of fun with it, and there were a lot of wrecks. I remember one time I was skiing down up there, and I was terrible. And there was a kid coming up, and there was a little rise in it like that, where it picked you up almost off the lift. And I came down, and I broadsided that poor kid right as he was in the last, the lightest spot. I hit him with my shoulder. Thank God his skis went over mine. And I looked up and I said, don't let go. Because <laughs> he was about 20 feet in the air. With his eyes. <laughs> Came down, landed just fine, kept going. So I thought it was fine. 
Um, that was the problem, and then they started doing some lodge additions and put some bathrooms in. Prior to that, it was the old outhouse out back here. Sometimes you could get in and sometimes you couldn't. There was always a little bit of stuff around the out back, so. Uh, but they got the bathrooms in, they built the kitchen, and uh, in 1968, this addition was built, and it um, gave a lot more seating and stuff like that. But that old lodge, you know, it was built in 1940, and it's still probably the solidest place in the building. I'm going to speed this up because Katie's got a lot to say. How are you here? Oh, there you are. Okay. So 1970, Ski Lift Incorporated bought the double chair, the prospector chair, and put it in. It was the longest ride in the country at the time, I think. And still is, might be. <laughs> 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 but it, but it, it created a whole different experience at, at, at uh, Kings Hill, which was the name of the place then. And it was just, you could ski down, they put a couple runs over there, Glory Hole, Second Top, and the Ridge. Um, and so you had to get out of there. Well, we started skiing over there the year before, and you had to get out of there. So there was a rope tow that went straight up in the air that came out from the bottom of Second Top up to where you can come away from uh, Midway on that road. God, you remember that? Yeah, that was a beauty. And, <coughs> and then um, it was like 1973, I was talking to a guy in a bar. And he said, why, why don't we buy that ski area? And so I, I said, sure. <laughs> great, great idea. I, I had two nice girls and uh, a nice wife and no money. So anyhow, I went, uh, I went uh, back to work, did whatever I was doing at the time, and two weeks later I saw him again in the same bar. And he said, what have you done about that project I was going to have you do? And I said, Oh, were you serious? <laughs> he says, yeah. So we put together a proposal to the board of directors of Ski Lift Inc. And I know we paid too much because they said yes right away. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, <laughs> it was, but then my life began. And I can honestly say with the help of all the new people and all of the people that have come skiing, Mostly my family who keeps supporting me. Um, Margie, who's a godsend. Well, she quit. She did quit me a couple of years ago, and Kim took over, and she was the next godsend. Under there, she is over <laughs> Anyhow, it's made it so much fun. I mean, where can you go to work? when you see people coming down the road with a big smile on their face and your only job is to send them home with the same smile or a bigger one. And it's a great way to live. You get to see people having fun and enjoying something that you really like to do. <clears throat> and so we, uh, we took over and the first thing we did, changed the name. Somebody said, why did you call it Showdown? Because every time I got up the top of that hill, I had a showdown with gravity. <laughs> Mostly gravity one. <laughs> so, but we, then we thought we'd make the old mining flare. Our original guy was the old miner there. <clears throat> and um, we, we put um, na all the names of the claims from the Nyhart area, with a few exceptions, or what the runs are called. So it, it was just a... Probably a really dumb thing to do, but because there are still guys that ski here, and I can probably point to them that call it the hollow. <laughs> so there you go. No wonder the ski patrol can't find an accident. It's on the hollow. Where the hell's the hollow? <laughs> In uh, 1974, we put a lodge addition under here. Uh, this was just used to be a, a cantilevered building, with, and so we dug it out, put walls around it. Idaho, where's Idaho? He's back there somewhere. 
He did most of the block work along with Wayne Ellington, who his daughter is over here. And we got the walls built, poured a floor, put lockers in, voila, worked great. In 1978, <clears throat> well, I have a funny story. We, in 64, they put the T-bar in out here. And it was the crankiest lift you ever rode in your life. It was metal cable on metal wheels, and it just ground its way up the hill. Well, one day, there was a huge line, way huger than anything we've seen to here. Probably was 45 minutes to get on a cranky T-bar. Well, we, I'm sitting there trying to make everybody feel good. Sorry about the house, you're having fun, yada, yada, yada. And this guy that ran the O'Connor funeral home came up and he said, you know, will it, <clears throat> the look on your face is the same look you see on a mortician's face, try to look sad at a $5,000 funeral. <laughs> I almost fell off the bed. I almost fell off the damn fence. <laughs> and then we put, we decided maybe the cranky T-bar had to go and so we went over to Switzerland and bought another uh, Swiss lift like we had down in the, in the coulee there, and built the, prop, the payload chair, and then completely changed the dynamics. When we took the, put the triple chair in, we took the palm up. No, we, when they put the T-bar in, they ran a palm up the side of the hill here, which was as hard as riding a rope toe, because kids would fall off. But think of all the learning they had trying to stay on that, on that palm. <laughs> Same with the road. Anyhow, we took those out when we put the triple chair in, and um, it just completely changed the dynamics of skiing and showdown. As most of you know, lines are not an issue. The only place there's a line in showdown is in the kitchen or the bathroom. But Avery's going to fix that. Why didn't I put my glasses on? Oh, in 1979, we had one of the worst experiences ever. We decided to put on a summer concert. It was 50 or, how much was it, 50 bucks? No, it was more than that. 50 bucks. And you got all the beer you could drink and you could listen to music all day. We had people with drug overdoses laying under the... <laughs> we had a lady walking out there, fell and broke her hip. We had to helicopter her out. We had the sheriff cycling, circling the place, trying to keep people from, from sneaking in because it's pretty well open. And I, I, I had to hide the kids. Katie, Jamie, and uh, most of our kids, we all hid upstairs because we were kind of worried somebody was going to take us apart. It was a terrible experience. So, that was a... What? I said it was really fun. What? I guess it was fun, but I was a nervous wreck. Anyhow, we, uh, we survived that, and I promised myself, don't ever call, don't ever talk to me again about it. Thank God nobody did. Um, in 1989, we had a great new addition or was it, yeah, 80, no, 86. We built a new maintenance shop. And it was kind of funny because <clears throat> the maintenance shop used to be right out here next to where the pommel was. And the snow cats would go through the crowd. And it was, and so I told this guy, this key to her every day. I said, he said, what'd you do? I said, well, we built a new maintenance shop. He says, where was the old one? <laughs> Probably should have put a new side up or something instead. I don't know. <laughs> Um, in, uh, all right, I can't see anymore. All right, so in, um, in 1989, we built the Top Rock Cafe, in 97, we built the Top Rock Cafe and the new addition on the lodge over here. And that, I thought it would, have all kinds of seating. It was just as crowded as before. And so I don't know what happened. I bought new chairs, but I don't know where they went. In 2006, we bought a lift out of Elta, the old columns lift, 
and put it over here as a beginner lift, and that really helped take the pressure off the um, off the triple chair with loading beginners. And it really has worked well to keep the beginners over on the goose, which is my favorite run. Once in the morning, once at night. <laughs> uh, we in 2020 we started a. a an aggressive logging project thanks to the Forest Service and got trying to get rid of all the dead, dying, and diseased trees. We've got more to do, but we're going to work on the cleanup of those areas again this next summer so that there are little, the wrong word, so that it's less hazards that you have to ski over. Now it won't be safer, but. <laughs> and, um, in 2020, in no, uh, September of 2020, Margie and I sold our stock to Katie, and I'm a consultant. <laughs> and it's a great night, and I want to thank my family. All my brother's kids are here with their kids. My sister and her kids are here with their kids, and we've just had a great week, and uh, God bless you all, and thanks for coming. All right, well, thank you, Grandpa. Next, I would like to ask Katie to come up, my mother. Hi everybody. Um, we thought it might be fun. I need AJ and Ricky to come up. And as we were kind of planning this over the last six months or so and what might be meaningful, um, we thought it might be fun for you to understand where the run names come from. And Dad hit some of that. Um, but we wanted to talk about each run and that's named after a person and why it's named after a person. Obviously, Dad and I should have communicated better because he covered a lot of what we're going to talk about. That's perfect. <laughs> there was no consulting that went on. on that. <laughs> and there's a lot of consulting that goes on that's not requested. <laughs> uh, the first run we're going to talk about, which Dad already talked about, is The Prentice. Um, and we all know The Prentice, right? We love The Prentice, and of course that was named after George Prentice, as Dad talked about. Um, the next run that we're gonna talk about is uh, the Ridge Run, the King's Ridge, named after our very own Stan King. And I have to so Stan King is a living legend. Here at Showdown and Nationwide, as a 60-year veteran of the National Ski Patrol, and the Great Falls Ski Patrol. The love dedication that Stan has poured into showdown and patrolling and the example he set for excellence sets the tone for our patrol today. Even at 85 years young, Stan remains active and involved in the Great Falls Ski Patrol. He is thoughtful and kind and a dedicated member of our community and we love him. Kings Ridge is named in honor of Stan King, King of the Hill. Yay. Yeah, kind of fancy. Um, this, we're, the ski bums, many of you know, and some, are there any, I don't know if we have any ski bums left in the room. Who's here? John Kleinfelter. We got a bunch of ski bums in the back. Uh, Brian Holland, John Kleinfelter. All, all the good-looking boys are in the back tonight. Um, the Ski Bums were an active club founded in 1962. Now these are their words and it's kind of cute. They were an all-male, all-skiing, all-the-time, good-time group. <laughs> a red hat with a yellow pom-pom is an icon of times gone by here at Showdown. And in the corner of the lodge as a memorial for these guys who helped make Showdown what it is now, um, we have a little uh, area downstairs that's a memorial to that, and you should take a look at it. 
a lot of these guys aren't with us any longer and are carving their turns in heaven. In honor of the Ski Bums, we're renaming Laura Ripley Ski Bums Lake. some really great guys that work here named Dick. But it's really hard. As you can imagine, the names that we went through, I can't really repeat. Here. But we finally came up with Dick Stitch in honor, I almost said, our three legendary Dicks. <laughs> Dick Mosier and Dick Nebel. Um, Dick Daly's ski race for the Great Falls High Ski School, or Great Falls High School, was our first ski school director and a firefighter in Great Falls all of his adult life. Dick raised his daughters here, loved skiing, and to this day remains one of the strongest, most beautiful skiers to grace this mountain. Dick Daly. A beautiful skiers, Dick Diebel was no slouch. Dick was a big, gruff guy that skied with the grace of a ballerina. To say his language was colorful would be an understatement, and he tried so hard to be a tough guy. But for those of us that knew and loved him, we never fell for that. He had a heart of gold buried in that big chest, and he'd do anything for those of us that he loved. Dick Mosier loved skiing, patrolling, and his family. He and Carol raised their boys here and made showdown their home. Like Dick Nebel, Dick Mosier pretended to be tough on the outside, but those sparkling blue eyes, kind nature, and easy laugh told the truth. I can't imagine the joy and pride Dick must be feeling as he watches his family grow and continue the legacy of love that he began that will now be carried down to the fourth generation with the birth of Carly's daughter. His great granddaughter. The day Scotty takes this little sweetie out for her first day of skiing will be a great day on our mountain. Indeed, as Dick's lifelong love for skiing is passed on to a new generation of Mosiers. Our dear friend Joe Pinsky was our mountain manager from 1973 through the early 2000s when a motorcycle accident forced his early retirement. He and Jimmy Hawkster, who came to showdown in 1975 and remains here today, 48 years later, have everything to do with the great scheme we all enjoy. Let's give him a round of applause. To this day, Joe remains an important part of our family and history. In honor of Joe Pinsky, we are returning the name of Compromise Pass to Pinsky. Oh, oh, oh. As my dad shared, Charles Bovey, who lived from 1907 to 1978, was influential in the formation of Kings Hill and donated the first motor first rope tow motor. He and his wife Sue were active preservationists and were responsible for the survival of Virginia City. In honor of Charles Bovey, we're restoring the original name of the Yoko Headwall to the Bovey Headwall. Jack Martin was one of the original members of our ski patrol and along with Tony Dallage started All Sports, a long-standing sports shop in Great Falls. But his true passion was the development of the Kings Hill Ski Area and the promotion of skiing. He was also president of the Great Falls Ski Club, skied into his late 80s, and especially enjoyed his trip with the ski bumps. We're making, we're retiring the Black Diamond and reinstating the original name, Throck Smile, in honor of Jack Throckworth. <laughs> in 
1973, George Willett, a shiny pants bookkeeper with a young family and a dream in his heart, left the comfort of a steady paycheck check to run a failing ski area in central Montana. 49 years later, he's still here, continuing the legacy those original dreamers started in 1936. George made it look easy because he loved it so much, and that makes it easy for all of us to take it for granted. But we really shouldn't because the truth is, this is a darn tough business. As an example, in 1973, when George took over the ski area, there were 1,100 ski areas in the U.S. Um, as of today, there are 470. 58% of the 1,100 ski areas failed. And to make things more challenging, Kings Hill was struggling when Dad took over. So what made the difference? Is it just the mountain and our consistently great snow? I'm sure lots of those areas that failed had good snow and great mountains as well. So why are we here celebrating 85 years as the oldest continually operating ski area in Montana and one of the oldest in the nation while so many others have failed? First, George's strong leadership, well-known fiscal responsibility, <laughs> and flat-out determination not to fail tells part of the story. His unwavering passion for the sport of skiing and contagious commitment to having fun and enjoying life is another. But we believe the most important reason this ski area endures is George's deep love for people. This love is genuine, drives everything he does, and is felt throughout every square inch of this lodge and mountain. When people say, and we hear it all the time, they feel like family, or when they come to showdown, they feel like they're coming home. This is because of George Willett. That's how he sees people and how he wants us all to feel. Championing and protecting this love is our biggest responsibility as we move forward. This is what makes Showdown, Showdown. In honor of George, the pay dirt was renamed The George in 2017. Three left. Carnahan actually put pay over the yeah. <laughs> Ted Foxwell. Our friend and George's, sorry, lifelong business partner Ted Coxwell passed away in 2019. Ted and George bought the ski area on a handshake deal in 1973 that lasted 45 years. Not many folks know about Ted's role at Showdown, as he was always happy to step back and have George in the spotlight. But let's be clear, without Ted and his financial backing, encouragement, and lifelong friendship, there would be no Showdown. Ted was not just a business partner, he was our dear friend, and his kind, easygoing nature and quick laugh made him many friends up here over the years. Ted will remain forever an integral part of our history as a business and our laughter and love-filled memories as human beings. In honor of Ted Coxwell, the North Goose, his favorite run, is being renamed Ted's Hump. <laughs> Dick Hall will always be remembered as one of the best human beings we ever knew. Dick was funny, kind, loyal, and dedicated to his family. He was an incredible dad to Lori, Chris, and Matt, a grandpa, son, brother, brother-in-law, uncle, godfather, and most importantly, our Aunt Claudia's soulmate. If you were lucky enough to be loved by Dick, you were damn lucky. Dick loved unabashedly and with his whole heart. He laughed easily and delighted in life and especially in those he loved. Dick married our Aunt Claudia, but as most of you know, the Hall family roots at Showdown run much deeper than that. 
Dr. Earl Hall Dick's dad and his wife Marianne played a key role in the early development of the ski area. And in the early 1960s, when Kings Hill, operated by Ski Lift Inc., was struggling to remain afloat, Dr. Hall, along with his friends from Great Falls, provided the financial support, support and dedication needed to keep the struggling ski area operating until it was sold to George and Ted. They were all avid skiers and clearly love this mountain and are an important reason why we're here today. The Hall family, including Dick's twin brother David, sister Anne, and brother Ron grew up skiing here and then raised families of skiers themselves. Additionally, Ron Hall, Dick's older brother, owned Skiers Edge Pro Shop along with Daryl Baggett and for the past 40 years has provided pro shop services in Great Falls and here on the mountain. The halls are part of the lifeblood of this mountain, and their significant contributions form an important part of our foundation. There are a couple generations of skiers out there that have only known our flagship run down the front of the mountain as Big Seven, but many of us remember it by its original name, the Hollow. To the entire Hall family, and especially our Uncle Dick. Thank you for your love and support for skiing and this mountain. In your honor, we retire the name Big Seven and reinstate this run. All right, the final one is kind of fun, and before we do it, I want all of our employees under the age of 40 to come up and stand behind me. Under the age of 40. Yeah. All right, take a good look at these faces. For our final run change, we've always had a run that was oddly spelt, so we took the liberty of fixing that. At the playful suggestion of our assistant operations manager, AJ Korsling, AJ. And as a wedding gift from all of us here at Showdown, we renamed the Molly, M-O-L-Y, to the Molly, M-O-L-L-Y. represents our future and all of the young people standing before you that will carry Showdown and its legacy to the next 85 years. I'm not sure what it is about Showdown that attracts such a high caliber of character, but the people standing before you are equal to those who came before them. They're exceptional, love this mountain, and take pride in ownership in all they do. They are Showdown's future and are not only the Guardians of the legacy laid down before them, they are visionaries in their own right with their own dreams for this place, and 85 years from now, they will be the ones being remembered, and runs will be named for them. Thank you.
I know, but it's not. because the audio in the video is amazing. And thank you to everybody who contributed. It turned out better than I imagined, so thank you. 